Welcome back and in this segment uh, we will be talking about the importance of uh, the Arabic language in light of uh, the celebration of uh, the Arabic Language Day which took place on the 18th of December and actually we have more than almost 1.2 billion uh, inhabitants of the world speaking that language and it's an important language which is with its diversity, its richness whether in the various metaphors and synonyms and and we will be talking about the importance of it uh, and more. And I'm happy to have with me Mr. Ibrahim Ashur, and he is a linguist and Islamic scholar. Welcome with us. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ashur. And we start with the historic importance of uh, the Arabic language. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, the uh, origin of Arabic uh, goes back, um, and this is a surprising, maybe a surprising information for many viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes back to the first uh, a human being uh, put on the, on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. It goes to the, our prophet and our father Adam. May the best peace and blessings be upon him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was speaking the Arabic language, uh, and uh, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has uh, sent him down with his uh, wife Eve, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent him down with uh, a guidance. He said, mm -hmm. which means that go down all of you, uh, whether uh, Adam or Eve or Satan, uh, in, on the face of the earth to be tested, mm -hmm. to, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see whether which one of us will be uh, uh, best in good deeds. Mm -hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down with him a, a tool uh, that we may communicate with each other. Of course, it will be the language. But so many uh, linguists and scholars are, uh, you know, in, uh, in dispute whether uh, Adam, peace be upon him, uh, uh, you know, was speaking uh, one language or different languages. Actually, there is no need for uh, anyone to speak more than one language mm -hmm. because uh, uh, language is, uh, first of all, is a medium of communication. Exactly. Yeah. So there is no need for speaking more than one language. As we see, uh, may, uh, uh, some may, uh, we have, for example, in, in, in Africa, uh, for example, Nigeria, we heard that Nigeria uh, has maybe uh, more than 20 languages. Mm -hmm. We say, okay, we have more than 20 languages, but each tribe has, uh, you know, its own language. Language or dialect? First of all, language and then dialect. Dialect is uh, uh, a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. is a phenomenon that uh, emerged from any language. This is a normal, it's not a problem, by the way. It's a, a normal yes. uh, way of uh, uh, speaking or uh, uh, as one of the characteristics of a language. So Adam, والسلام, the best peace and blessings be upon him, was speaking just one language, which is the Arabic language. And it's a long, long uh, way if we trace the the uh, the origin of language but it, it needs i think ages to uh, you know prove that mm -hmm. but uh, uh, with confirmation adam may the best peace and best may the best peace and best be upon him was speaking the arabic language and the only uh, language he uh, spoke well i understand that the arabic language is one of the branches of uh, the aramaic uh, type of languages is you, you mean semitic the, the semitic, semitic uh, yes. languages yes yes to, uh, and that actually the actually even the the arabic language itself it has its own different versions whether like uh, uh, and scripts whether like the nabatian or the napti uh, and many other even and it developed throughout time by the middle ages the uh, the arabic language uh, became one of the most important in terms of transferring the sciences uh, yes. to the world especially in terms of translations where many of the greek and ancient languages were translated now the role of that the uh, when we always talk about the importance of uh, the arabic language on the western civilization and its impact could you tell us more about that please actually i like the word that you said development because there is a far difference between development and changing mm -hmm. uh, and changing because all languages, without any exception all languages uh, uh, you know, change, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, years mm -hmm. and after uh, a while. For example, the, mm -hmm. uh, we have an English language, we have the American accent and British accent, Australian mm -hmm. accent and more than uh, one accent. Uh, uh, some linguists said uh, after maybe 100 uh, years, mm -hmm. uh, we will not have uh, American mm -hmm. accent and British accent. We will have American language and British language. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it goes like this. It's not in, in the parallel, uh, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. lines. Mm -hmm. Arabic language, one of the characteristics uh, that 
distinguishes the Arabic language that it develops to keep the base of advancement, mm -hmm. but it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. By the way, they discovered some remainings of, uh, if you know the Aad and Tamud, yes, Aad yes. and Tamud, the, uh, the uh, pure uh, Arabic tribes, they discovered in the previous uh, century some remainings uh, uh, on them written the Arabic calligraphy or the Arabic letters, mm -hmm. which means that the Arabic language, uh, you know, was exist uh, from the dawn of the history. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. Uh, so it develops, but it doesn't change. For uh, the benefit of this, as we uh, say many times and every day, that the uh, identity of anyone has uh, three main elements. The first one is the history. The second one is religion. The third one is language. Language is like the, the, the shield or the cover of uh, the other two uh, elements, which is religion and uh, uh, history. For example, here in Egypt, we speak in Arabic language. Mm -hmm. If we don't know Arabic, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that we can uh, read any historical books? Of course not. Can we understand our religion as Muslims? Of course not. This is the shield of our uh, entire identity. Mm -hmm. And as you said as well, in the Middle Ages, we were uh, so advanced and all the uh, Western countries and European countries, uh, you know, uh, used to uh, import the knowledge through the uh, uh, Arabic language. And of course, they used to learn it, to learn it. Today, we are, you know, in the opposite side. Now mm -hmm. we, are, we are learning English because we're not advanced and the source of language and the source of advancement, advancement as well is there. It's not in Arab countries. Mm -hmm. That's why. Um, sir, we are talking also about <coughs> the characteristics. Uh, of course, any language in the world has its own characteristics, but the Arabic language in particular has so many characteristics that are so special and confined to it. For example, one of those characteristics is that it is a very rich language. Uh, for me, being a translator, I have come to experience some difficulties uh, because I found that um, one word or one state could be expressed in various words in Arabic. For example, if we're talking about happiness, you yes. would see like al-ghabta, al-farah, al-surur, al like 10 or, or even 15 or words expressing like the same level or even levels of the same of the same word. So what are the other uh, special characteristics about the Arabic language? Uh, first of all, to confirm what you're saying uh, right now, uh, this characteristic specifically, uh, Dr. Tahiyya Abdul Aziz derived from what you're saying that the Arabic language is the source of all languages. Because the Arabic language, uh, um, the, the, the least number of the uh, uh, root words, I'm not talking about all words, the mm. root words uh, are more than uh, 300, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, 300,000 uh, uh, words, and, and, and more than this, by mm -hmm. the way. Yes. So it's One word in Arabic could be translated into a whole sentence. The, re the, the root, the root of the word, we, we can have, uh, you know, millions of words if we emerge from mm -hmm. the uh, 300,000, uh, uh, the, the, all the uh, derivatives. Yes. Okay, so the Arabic language is so rich, this is one of the characteristics. The second character, uh, one of the characteristics of the Arabic language, that it, it, uh, it has a, a big uh, and a mm -hmm. huge stability. And mm -hmm. we said right now that uh, from Adam to now, I challenge anyone to bring me any text from Adam to uh, uh, up to now uh, uh, for the Arabic language that changes the Arabic language changes that we have different Arabic uh, some linguists says we have uh, classical Arabic we have modern Arabic but this is all semantic you know uh, uh, words but basically Arabic language from the dawn of the history from Adam is the best piece of blessings we want until now we have just one Arabic and a challenge anyone to bring me any text uh, you know, different from what we have now. Now, how can we safeguard our language from being distorted or even losing it? Like in, in Turkey, the, the Arabic language used to be uh, the main language till Atatürk uh, exchanged the language and uh, started using Western characters instead of Arabic letters. Latin, and, and, uh, letters. Yeah, and, and now uh, what we have is that they do no longer uh, speak Arabic. So how can we protect uh, our identity so that uh, what's happened in Turkey won't happen elsewhere in the world and in Egypt in particular. To confirm also what you're saying, mashallah, your questions are very, very amazing, <laughs> mashallah. Uh, uh, the, uh, as I said right now, the um, uh, identity of anyone 
uh, uh, the, we have three elements. The first one, religion. The second yes. one, history. The third one, language. Uh, what happened in, in Albania, by the way, I'd like mm -hmm. to recall the uh, Albanian uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, Albania, uh, uh, they used to uh, write their words in Arabic letters mm -hmm. after uh, in the Ottoman uh, uh, Empire, during mm -hmm. the Ottoman Empire. Uh, afterwards, after the Ottoman Empire, uh, they uh, were ordered to change the, uh, uh, the, the system of writing from the Arabic letters into Latin letters. Mm -hmm. What's happening now? What's happening right now? The recent generations, when they enter any uh, huge uh, library and they try to uh, uh, open any book of the last centuries, they do not understand anything mm -hmm. because it's the old books, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, heritage of, of, of them. Uh, are written in Arabic letters. So when mm -hmm. they open any book, they do not understand anything. So now we have a separation between them and all uh, their history. Mm -hmm. Exactly what happened in, in Turkey mm -hmm. when Kamala took order to change the uh, writing the uh, Arabic, the, uh, the, uh, the Turkish letters from uh, writing it uh, in Arabic language into Latin uh, 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 letters. And what's happening now? Also, we have separation uh, uh, between the uh, this generation and all other generations. Uh, uh, you said also something... How can we protect How ourselves we protect? from uh, and preserve the Arabic language within our country so that what happened in Turkey won't happen elsewhere? Okay, first of all, uh, as uh, you know, uh, citizens or as Arabs, we have to uh, uh, raise the level of awareness specifically in our children. Mm -hmm. We have to teach them how to protect it. We have to teach them the status of the Arabic language because uh, um, in all, uh, uh, you know, uh, different tribes and people and, and countries, uh, uh, they have uh, two things uh, separated from each other. They have religion and language. For example, in, in Spanish, for example, they are Christians and uh, their language is Spanish. In, in England, they are Christians and they have uh, English language. But in, in, uh, with Arabic, we have a religion which is Islam and we have Arabic language. But they are connected to each other because the original book of uh, cr uh, Christians uh, was not in, in, in English language or Spanish or, or, mm. or, or, or maybe uh, uh, um, uh, German or, or and so, on, uh, and so on and so forth. But Arabic language, we have to teach uh, our children that the Arabic language is connected to our religion. If you understand your Arabic, you will understand your language. And Umar ibn Khattab said, uh, learn Arabic because it's a part of your religion. So the first thing we have to raise the level of identity and awareness in our uh, children uh, uh, minds to know the status of the Arabic language. The second thing actually I'd like to talk about the, the Arabic uh, uh, language complex, the complex of the Arabic language. We have, as we know, we are not advanced. We import everything, even the pen. Mm. So why we import everything without naming it with uh, uh, an Arabic, a pure Arabic name. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, mashallah, millions of words. Are we uh, disabled to name uh, the devices that we import uh, to, uh, into the Arabic uh, language? As, You're uh, talking about the effect of globalization. Yes, here, of course. And, and modern technology and, and, and uh, globalization, if, if, if we may say, the effect of globalization on the language yes. and how we don't it started manufacture. to insert new words into our uh, daily usage of language. Yes, of course, we import the technology and the like of that as it is with their names. But if you review the, uh, as you know, al Hafid Ibrahim, when he said the, uh, his poem, the famous poem, I think in 1903, uh, he said uh, about the Arabic language. The Arabic language is mm. talking about uh, herself. She said, وَسِعْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ لَفْضًا وَغَايَةً وما ضقت عن آي به وعظاتي فكيف أضيق اليوم عن وصف آلة وتنسيق أسماء لمخترعاتي The Arabic language is like a container of the word of Allah which is the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام So how can we uh, uh, disable to uh, contain and to coin and invent new words within the Arabic language for the new invented things that we import from the Western country which is the uh, uh, advanced countries. But I think it's been tried, but sometimes it sounds different. Like the telephone when you say al-masarra or uh, the sandwich when you say tazij shatir wa mashtur wa baynahuma tazij. Sometimes it's very complicated. This is ironical. This is, this is sometimes it's very complicated uh, terminology. This is the responsibility of 
what I, I, I call now the complex of the Arabic language. They are responsible, they are in charge of naming a proper name for every single proper device we... Uh, easy uh, name. Yeah, it's easy. It's very, How can I name difficult. the sandwich toz, uh, uh, shatru, bainahum, it's uh, a funny word. If you say this in, exactly. to, to anyone, you will, you know, uh, mock, you will crack jokes yes, at you. Exactly. This is not proper at all. This is the, the responsibility of the uh, uh, official institute mm -hmm. to coin an easy and the pure Arabic word. And we have mm -hmm. so many words and millions of words. It's not disabled. It's very strong a language mm -hmm. and it's the source of all languages as we stated from the beginning of this segment. Yes. Mr. Ashur, do you think that dialects are a threat to uh, the Arabic language? This is what the enemies of the Arabic language used to say and used to try to convince mm -hmm. us that it's a problem. The, uh, all languages, all languages, or let, uh, mm -hmm. let's be um, uh, more precise, mm -hmm. most of the languages uh, have what we call dialects. It's, mm -hmm. a norm, it's not a problem at all. Yes. It's a normal uh, phenomena for any language mm -hmm. like the Arabic language now we, we're talking about uh, as uh, Egyptians we are we're talking in Egyptian dialect but if uh, someone uh, talks to us in uh, uh, standard Arabic which we which we call it mm -hmm. the uh, the Fusha Arabic do we mm -hmm. understand or not yeah. of course we understand because mm -hmm. the Egyptian dialect or Algerian dialect or Saudi dialect are derived and, 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 and came from But the, the Algerian original. and Morocco and Tunisian in particular, I mean, this part of the world, North Africa, I, I've been there and I, I, I found it very it's difficult. Difficult. I found it very difficult to understand their Arabic because it's a mix of Arabic and French. And, and, and this, I thought that this was... I think you answered the question. They mix uh, with the, their own languages, other languages. But mm -hmm. if they uh, speak in a pure uh, Algerian dialect, you will understand them easily, as no. Egypt. <laughs> I didn't. I think so. a bit of the Berber dialect in it as well, I think. This, I didn't. This is not I, Arabic. I, I failed. I yeah. failed to understand. I, uh, my doctor, Dr. Uh, Ali Izzat, is a, a professor and, and he was an, uh, mm. a head of the, uh, uh, the mm. English department in Ain Shams University. Mm. He compiled uh, a huge research in uh, uh, 1974, after one year of the uh, October victory, he compiled a, a, a research uh, called Intelligibility Among Arab Dialects, and this uh, answers your question. He, um, with his friends, the uh, Kuwaiti, uh, Algerian, uh, Moroccan, Saudi, and Yemeni, and him as Egyptian, he compiled uh, a book, this book, to prove that there is no, uh, uh, you know, what we call it ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Everything is intelligible to each other. They recorded more than two hours a dialogue with each other mm -hmm. all these different dialects and they discovered eventually that all of them un uh, are uh, understanding each other but few words few vocabulary they don't understand but they uh, you know uh, ask from each other to explain it and yes. you can ex understand it from the context mm -hmm. i think it's something normal even in inside Egypt, if mm. you are uh, from the upper Egypt and you're talking to another one from inside Egypt, but from different uh, place, you can find uh, so many words that you do not understand inside one place. Mm. So dialects are normal and it's like uh, a normal phenomena for any language. It's not a problem at all. Actually, the Arabic language needs more to be talked about and discussed, but uh, unfortunately we have to wrap up this segment. I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim Ashur, the linguist and the Islamic scholar. Thank you very much for shedding a uh, few or some l l highlights on uh, the Arabic language, because actually it, it's diverse and, uh, and wide. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. We'll be right back to resume this edition of Ma Cruz right after a short break.